Welcome back to the One God Report podcast. This is Bill Schlegel. The title of this episode is called Tips on How to Talk to Trinitarians about John Chapter 1. Many Trinitarians, when they first hear that a person doesn't believe that God is a Trinity, and they'll think right away, well, what about John chapter 1? John chapter 1 is like the best evidence somehow that Jesus is God and therefore God is a Trinity. And I've been thinking about John chapter 1 now for several years and had some conversations with Trinitarians. And there's a few things that I think can help a person perhaps see John chapter 1 in a new light. So I wanted to talk about a few of those things. And some of this will be reviewing things said in former podcasts too, but I thought it'd be good to kind of get a few tips all together here. Now, the key verses for Trinitarians in John chapter 1 are, of course, John 1.1 1, 1, and then John 1.14. John 1.1 1, 1 starts out, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And for the Trinitarian, that is a declaration that Jesus is a second God figure, divine figure, in addition to the Father. I knew as a Trinitarian, and I found as I speak to Trinitarians now, that most Trinitarians don't have any idea about God bringing about the new creation through Jesus the Messiah. And this is a key point in describing or explaining this understanding of John 1.1. 1, 1. The phrase, in the beginning, for the Trinitarian world is a direct reference to the Genesis creation. So I think it's important to explain to a Trinitarian person that, hey, through Jesus, the Messiah, God has done something new. There's a new beginning in the man Jesus. And it would make sense that this is what the Gospel of John is describing, a new beginning. Yes, sure, John uses some language from Genesis creation here, but not a lot, actually. And there's some very different language between the two chapters, Genesis chapter 1 and John chapter 1. But the author is intentionally using some Genesis language here to show the continuity between the God who created the heavens and the earth in Genesis chapter 1 and the God who is at work in Jesus to bring about new life in John chapter 1. So the big question then is, which beginning is John chapter 1 directly referring to? And I think there's several ways in which you can get a person to think, oh, yeah, this is a different beginning than the Genesis chapter 1 creation. And the first thing is to note how the phrase, the beginning, is used in the Gospel of John itself. Now, of course, when we're talking to people, it's going to be hard to remember references, but it would be a good idea to know some of these references, or at least the content of a few other references associated with the beginning in the Gospel of John. I'll I'll mention a few here, John chapter 8, verse 25, where people ask Jesus, who are you? And Jesus said to them, even what I have told you from the beginning. So this is obviously a reference to the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. And John fifteen twenty seven, where Jesus speaks to the apostles and he says, you also are witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. So here we're looking at the Gospel of John to see the phrase, the beginning, is not referring to the Genesis creation, but to the beginning in the life and ministry of Jesus the Messiah. Here's another one, John 16, 4. Jesus says to the apostles, I have said these things to you that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. He's getting ready to leave them. So we're letting the Gospel of John help us understand what the phrase the beginning or in the beginning is here in his own Gospel, within the Gospel of John itself. And then I think it's important to point out that the other Gospels as well all have a beginning at the beginning of their Gospel, which is associated with the beginning of the life and ministry of Jesus. So it makes sense that John is like the other Gospels, describing the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. Here's the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's Mark's beginning. 
And the Gospel of Luke, too, has a beginning. In Luke chapter 1, verse 2, he says that things were delivered by those who from the beginning, that's the apostles, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. So once again, here we see a beginning associated with the life and the ministry of Jesus and his apostles. And the Gospel of Matthew starts out with a beginning. It's not as direct here, but Matthew starts out by saying, the book of the Genesis of Jesus Christ, the, the genealogy, the origin of Jesus Christ. This is the beginning, and it's traced back to Jesus' physical descendancy through David and Abraham. So all the other Gospels have a beginning, and it would be strange to think that the Gospel of John's beginning is different from the other three Gospels. Then we can see how the phrase, in the beginning, is used in other places in the Bible as well to reference not the Genesis creation, but other new beginnings, other beginnings, like Acts chapter 11, verse 15, when Peter is explaining to the other Jews in Jerusalem what happened with the Gentile Cornelius in Caesarea, he says, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us in the beginning, or at the beginning. It's the exact same phrase in John chapter 1. So the phrase, the beginning, needs context. I might say, let me tell you what happened in the beginning, and you might think I'm talking about creation of the universe, but it might also be in context, the beginning of the relationship with my wife. So as well, in the Gospel of John, we need context to know what beginning is discussed here. Paul uses the exact same phrase, in the beginning, in Philippians 4.15. He says, in the beginning of the Gospel, when I left Macedonia. So here, Paul's beginning is a different one, when he first started to preach the Gospel in Greece. So the beginning of the baptism of John, the ministry of Jesus, the apostles see as a new beginning. I think we can see the same idea in the epistle of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 1, where the author talks about the beginning concerning the word of life, and it involved something and someone that the apostles heard and saw and touched. Obviously, that beginning is with the man, Jesus, who was living among them. So the idea that John is presenting a new beginning here is very important because if the Gospel of John chapter 1 is about the new beginning in Jesus Christ and is not a direct reference, it's only an echo of the Genesis creation, if this is about the new beginning in Jesus Christ, all this speculation about another divine figure involved in the Genesis creation, like I said in the previous podcast, it's barking up the wrong tree. You've got the wrong creation. John chapter 1 is about the new beginning, the new creation that God is working through the man Jesus Christ, through the human being Jesus Christ. Now, in some of the discussions I've had with Trinitarians, when I tell them this, I can see, wow, they're thinking about it because they haven't heard this before. But if we can explain to people that the Gospel of John is about the new beginning, that God is at work in and through the man Jesus, I've seen it makes people think a little bit. It doesn't mean that right away they say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it makes them think a little bit. And if, if they want to think more about it, they will. A lot of people just don't want to think about it because they still think, oh, if you don't think Jesus is God, you're going to hell forever and ever and ever. But for those that want to know the truth, and I hope that the fact that they're missing out on the meaning of John chapter 1 and really what the whole gospel is about, they're deflecting the meaning of John chapter 1 to some discussion about the Genesis creation and a second figure who is also God somehow, who created the universe. And they miss out on what God is really communicating here in John chapter 1, and that there's a new beginning, there's new life in the man Jesus. I hope they don't miss out on that new life by ignoring and deflecting what God is really presenting to us here in John chapter 1. So I think this is very important. And doesn't it make sense that God is doing something with Jesus that, yes, has continuity with what God has done in the past, 
but is new with Jesus. And that's why Jesus is called the Word here, because God in the past created through his Word and worked through his Word, did things through his Word. And that's what he's doing here now with Jesus, beginning in the first century A.D. So the idea of the new beginning, the new creation, is what is being presented here in the Gospel of John. And by the way, that's the same with the other passages that Trinitarians also think somehow show that Jesus was involved in the Genesis creation, but he's really involved in the new creation. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 18, for instance. But you can see Jesus is the firstborn of creation. He's the firstborn of the resurrection from the dead. Things come to be through him, yes. New life comes to be through him. New authorities come to be through him. Hebrews chapter 1, the same thing. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 5, Jesus Christ is, quote, the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the dead ones. And Revelation chapter 3, 14 describes Jesus as the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. So we have the parallels and confirmation from other New Testament literature that Jesus is the beginning of God's new creation. Resurrection from the dead is new creation, and the new creation life comes through him. So here are just a few other ways to be able to show that it's not the creation of Genesis that's being described in John 1. By the way, there's no, the word create is not in the Gospel of John chapter 1. It might be in some English translations. But the Greek word for create, it's not there. It's simply not there. So that's strange. If John chapter 1 is talking about the Genesis creation, the word to create, it's not there. Things come to be in John chapter 1. Things are made, you might even say, but it's really the word to come to be. And what comes to be in John chapter 1 is life. This is the main thrust of the gospel of John, the coming to be of new life. The subject of what comes to be is not the seas, the dry land, plants, animals, planets, stars, or the sun in John chapter 1, but it's human life individually, and I'll suggest corporately as well, corporately, because the word world in John chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, the true light that was coming into the world and the world that came to be through him. This is not planet Earth. This is the word cosmos, and it's a word which means a segment of human society. So John 1 is not about the material world coming to be. It's about human life coming to be, and how a person can be born of God and to become part of the family of God. See John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, all those who are born of God. This is the subject of John chapter 1 and of the gospel of John. It's not the creation of planets and seas and dry land. We can see that it's life, human life, that's coming to be in the gospel of John. If we look at verses 3 and 4, again, sometimes the issue is translation, but verse 3 says that all things, the word things is not in the Greek text, it's simply all all came to be through him, and without him, nothing came to be. And then there's a textual issue. If the last part of verse 3 goes with verse 4, I think it does. I think what it's really saying is that which came to be in him was life. That's what he's talking about. This is the all that came to be in him. That which came to be in him was life. And even if you just take the beginning of verse 4, as most English translations have it, in him was life. It's the life that comes to be. This is the topic of John chapter 1. I like to say, put John chapter 1, verse 1 through 18, next to Genesis 1, 1 through 18, and see if you think it's really talking about the same subject. It's not. John is simply appropriating some of the Genesis language to say that the God who created in Genesis is now at work again through the man Jesus to bring about life. It's life coming to be. That is the topic of John 1. It's new life coming to be through the man, Jesus Christ. So it's not the 
created earth that comes to be in John chapter 1, the world. It's not, the, it's not planet earth. This is a segment of human society. John chapter 1 is about life for humans, how a person can be born of God and to become part of the family of God. Now, this, a second way I think we can show people that John 1 is not about the Genesis creation, but it is about the new beginning, the new creation that God is working through Jesus, is this phrase in John chapter 1, verse 4, and the life was the light of men. Okay, so although Genesis creation language is being intentionally used, this is not Genesis creation life or Genesis creation light. Now think about this. In the book of Genesis, which comes first, light or life? It's light, right? God said, let there be light, first thing he said. And so light is first in the book of Genesis. Then life comes later. But in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 4, it's life that comes first. And that life is the light for all humankind. So this is talking about the man Jesus. In him comes to be life. That's first. And the life of the resurrected from the dead man, Jesus Christ, is light for all men. Hope for all men that we as well can be raised from the dead. So this is another way to see that the Gospel of John, chapters 1, here we're talking about verses 3 and 4, it's not talking about Genesis creation. It's talking about the new life in the man, Jesus Christ, that comes to be through the man, Jesus Christ, who's metaphorically called the Word. Just like life came through God's Word in Genesis, so life comes through God's Word, the man, Jesus, in the Gospel of John. Now, another way that we can see that the Gospel of John chapter 1 is not about the Genesis creation, that it's about the new beginning in the life of Jesus, is the fact that John the baptizer is so prominently and so early introduced in this chapter. In verses 6 to 8, already John the baptizer is introduced and testifying to the true light, the man, Jesus Christ, who in the Gospel we learn is the light of the world, he came into the world as light. This is the man, Jesus Christ. And John the baptizer is introduced very early. Why? Because people at the time were wondering about the relationship between John the baptizer and Jesus. Was John the baptizer the Christ? Who's more prominent, Jesus or John the baptizer? So this gospel very quickly clarifies the relationship between Jesus and John the baptizer. John the baptizer has no reason to be in a Genesis creation account in verse 6. This is a new creation, a new beginning in the man Jesus. And John's presence here in this gospel early and often is evidence that we are talking here about a new beginning, a new creation in the man Jesus. Actually, the whole prologue can be understood as a clarification of the relationship between the man Jesus and John the baptizer. Even in verse 1, this is perhaps already a comparison. We'll get to verse 1, but in verses 1 and 2, I think there's already a comparison between the man Jesus and John the baptizer. Okay, so this is not Genesis creation. When the gospel writer says that the word was with God, this is a unique relationship that the man Jesus has with God. And then in verse 2, where he says, this one was in the beginning with God. Well, that's a comparison with verse 7, where it starts out with the exact same pronoun. This one came for testimony. John the Baptist, this one came for testimony. So if you read John chapter 1, even the continuation, look at verse 19 and following, it's all about John the baptizer's testimony to who Jesus is. So the whole prologue is as well. John the baptizer is in verse 6 through 8. He's in verse 15. The prologue may be a little bit more of a kind of an abstract comparison between Jesus and John the Baptist. And then in verse 19 and following in the rest of John chapter 1 is the more narrative description of the relationship of Jesus and John the Baptist. But the whole prologue can be seen in the backdrop of the Jesus and John the Baptist clarification. 
It's not a description of the Genesis creation. And by the way, this is another thing to note, and of course you start to get off track a little bit, but Trinitarian scholars, they realize that the Gospel of John is introducing a new creation. Former podcasts, I've quoted some of these Trinitarians where people like F.F. Bruce and Leon Morris, who wrote a commentary on the Gospel of John, even James White in his book, The Forgotten Trinity, these commentators recognize that the beginning in Genesis is about the creation of the material world or an organization of the material world. And John chapter 1 is about the redemption, the renewal of that world, specifically of the redemption or new creation of people, of humans. Here's James White in his book, The Forgotten Trinity, page 45, quote, Just as Genesis introduces God's work of creation, so John 1.1 introduces God's work of redeeming that people. And that work has been going on just as long as creation itself. He recognizes it. Then he forgets what he says and misinterprets the rest of the chapter. It's the work of God's redeeming that people. New creation is the work of redemption. So that's what John 1 is about. But they can see that. This is about life coming to be, new life coming to be, being born of God. All of these ideas, a new community of God, a new family of God coming to be. This is not about the Genesis creation in John chapter 1. So again, if a person can see that the beginning here is not a direct reference to the Genesis creation. By the way, it's not even really the beginning, and you could translate this as at a beginning or at the beginning. The different article is not in either the Hebrew Genesis or the John chapter 1. You don't have the there. This could be translated at the beginning or at a beginning. But once a person sees that John 1 is describing the new beginning that God's bringing about through Jesus, the Messiah, all of a sudden light bulbs will start to come on. They'll see, oh yeah, this is parallel to Colossians chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 1, the new creation that God's bringing about. This is not about the old Genesis creation. Now, of course, there are other issues in the Gospel of John, but if you can explain that some, I think you'll find people are willing to listen. And of course, we don't don't get mad. We don't have to get all flustered with their inability maybe to understand this at first. People are going to stick with what they want to believe in in any case, but there's going to be people that are willing to listen. There's people that respect the scriptures enough that will listen to this. I'll stop there for now, and God willing, next podcast, we will look closer at the text in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, and see then how do we understand some of these statements from the new creation interpretation of John 1, that God is at work through his word, the man, Jesus Christ, to bring about redemption, restoration, and new life. How can we understand John 1, 1, the word was with God and the word was God? One announcement, if you are able and willing to come to the Biblical Unitarian Christian Alliance Conference, slated for October 13 to 15, it's a Thursday to Saturday night in Lawrenceville, Ohio, near Springfield. You should try to come. It's a great time to meet like-minded believers, be challenged with presentations and seminars. I plan to be there giving a presentation on Micah 5, 2, and if this is evidence for the eternal deity of the Messiah. I'll put a link in the show notes. So again, I think it's helpful to be able to suggest to people that John chapter 1 is about the new beginning that God is bringing about through Jesus. And if you don't agree with that, then maybe react or respond to why some of these points that I presented here are not evidence. We're speaking about a new creation. For instance, we saw that what is the focus of John chapter 1 is not the creation of the material physical world, but of new life, of new human life. And although some of the creation language is used, we're missing big parts. The word create is not in John chapter 1. And the light and life in John chapter 1 verses 
three and four are different than the Genesis creation light and life. And why is John the Baptist here in this prologue or this description of the Genesis creation? And also, do you not think the references to the beginning in the Gospel of John might inform us as to which beginning is going on here? And you don't think that the beginnings of the other Gospels are parallel and the same beginning here that John is introducing? So next time we'll plan to get into the text of John 1. Yishma'u anavim ve'yismachu. The humble will hear and rejoice.